So welcome to another electrifying chapter in physics which establishes forces between charged particles through what is famously known as the Coulomb's law named after the great scientist Charles Augustine Coulomb. And few people know that he was actually a French military engineer in the 18th century. Also while Coulomb is known for his study around electrostatic forces between charges, you'll be surprised to know that he was also well known for the great work he did in the field of friction. So before we go on and learn Coulomb's law, let us try to quickly understand the structure of an atom and how an atom gains or loses a charge. So an atom typically has a nucleus that has positively charged protons and uncharged neutrons and the space around the neutron or the nucleus rather has a cloud of electrons that are negatively charged and are kind of moving around this nucleus. Now important to remember that the magnitude of charge on an electron is same as that on a proton although they are opposite in sign. Well in a neutral atom the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons and hence the positive and negative charge cancels each other and therefore the atom becomes neutral. Well therefore an atom that has one or more electron removed obviously has more protons and hence more positive charge and is therefore termed positively charged. Likewise if the atom gains one or more electron the number of electrons become more than the number of protons and it becomes negatively charged. Now what you would have noticed is that I am talking about addition or removal of electrons only to define the charge that an atom gains. I am not talking about the removal or addition of protons to change charge of a neutral atom. Well the reason for this is that protons are tightly bound in the nucleus and cannot be removed easily unless you use an accelerator. So the actual real charge transfer takes place on account of movement of electrons only. So uh, when you see a wire carrying current essentially it's a movement of electrons across a wire which is causing the current and we'll get to learn more about it as we move ahead in this chapter. So with this understanding let us move a little towards understanding Coulomb's law better. So if you take a glass rod and rub it with a silk cloth, what happens is that electrons from the glass rod flow on to the silk cloth. This therefore results in the glass rod becoming positively charged because it's lost electrons and the silk cloth becomes negatively charged. Well if you consider the glass rod and the silk cloth collectively, they are still neutral because the electrons lost by the glass rod are gained by the silk cloth. Now let us hang this rod with a non-insulating wire so that we kind of electrically isolate it and so that no charge can flow in or out of the rod. Now if you take another glass rod and rub it in the same way with silk, it too will become positively charged and if we now hang it alongside this rod, what you'll find is that they will repel each other. Now. Let us take a plastic rod instead of a glass rod and rub it with fur. Now in this case due to material property of plastic electrons flow from fur to the plastic rod. So here is a plastic rod and if you rub it with fur the plastic rod becomes negatively charged because electrons have flowed from the fur to the plastic rod. So you will have a negative charge on this plastic rod. So let me also go ahead and label that this is glass, this is glass but this is plastic. And important to note that while the plastic rod has become negatively charged, the fur has become positively charged by an equivalent amount. Now if you hang this plastic rod alongside the glass rod, you know the two will attract each other. So that brings us to classification of materials as conductors and insulators. 
So conducting materials are those that allow free flow of electrons. So these typically are metals like copper, iron, etc. So e even human body is a very good conductor of electrons. So let us say uh, this is your copper wire. What you'll find is that the electrons inside this copper wire will flow freely in the desired direction. And we'll learn more about what direction the electrons take in the subsequent chapters. But for now, it is important to understand is that conductors will allow electrons to flow inside freely, while insulators are those materials that do not allow free flow of electrons. And examples of insulators are, uh, or, or let's say non-conductors are rubber, wood, plastic, etc. So what happens is that electrons inside these non-conductors or insulators, so let's say this is a piece of wood, the electrons inside are tightly bound and they're not allowed to move. So this is the difference between a conductor, so this is a conductor and this is an insulator. So if a negatively charged rod is touched by you and let us say you are touching a metal tap, So this is your metal tap and let us say it is grounded to earth. So if you are touching this rod which is negatively charged and you are touching a metal tap, what will happen is all the electrons will flow through your body into the tap and into the earth. So all the electrons will get kind of grounded inside earth. Or in other words, you're transferring electrons from the charged rod to the tap and into the earth. This will then render the rod neutral because all the excess electrons have been passed on to a, a large reservoir, which is earth in this case. So your body, much like a copper wire, is behaving like a conductor. Alternately, another way of looking at it is that if you're trying to charge a rod, but are also holding it in hand while touching a metal tap, the rod will never charge and the electrons will just keep flowing from the rod into the ground. So this is called grounding the object or neutralizing the object by removing any excess charge. Now this brings us to another interesting part of the chapter and that is induced charge. So if you bring a negatively charged plastic rod near a neutral copper rod, the negative charge on the plastic rod or rather the excess electrons on the plastic rod repel the free electrons in the copper rod to the other end, thereby creating a positive charge on the end closer to the plastic rod. So you have free electrons in this copper rod. Remember, it's, it's a metal and it has electrons which can move across the rod easily. And when you bring a, a negatively charged plastic rod, the electrons on this side of the rod get repelled and they migrate towards the other end so that you have excess of electrons on this side of the rod and this side therefore becomes more negative and since the negative charge of the electrons have migrated this side you'll have a higher concentration of positive charge on this side of the copper rod and therefore the positively charged end is attracted to the negatively charged plastic rod even though the copper rod is still neutral. Remember, the total charge on this is still neutral because electrons have just migrated. We have not added electrons to this rod. However, we say that the induced charge is making it attract to the plastic rod and this induction is on account of bringing this plastic rod, which is negatively charged, close to the copper rod which was initially neutral.